So uh, Aisha, I'm seeing that it's live now. Um, yes, we are. So I'd like to welcome oh, everyone back. It's yes, now we're live. Yeah, go ahead, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. So I'd like to welcome everyone back and I do apologize that we were having problems with connection. Actually, um, we just got um, disconnected from Facebook, so we're back. Um, I'm not sure, Courtney, how much of your uh, presentation was heard. Uh, okay. Aisha, do you have an idea? I can do a quick recap, that's okay. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. So the early on programming at Mothercraft, um, and that encompasses things like the parent drop-ins that we were offering, the workshops, um, all of those things have been able to continue being offered in a virtual capacity, which is wonderful. So we have things like virtual circle times, evening story time. Uh, we've got some great workshops coming up in June, some music, uh, some breastfeeding workshops, some sleep seminars, some really great offerings for families, that, um, things that we've been able to continue offering the families of Ottawa. Um, so that's the early on piece. The um, donation cupboard that we operate uh, has able, been able to continue as well. So we just have folks email or call for that and we can prepare bags of, um, usually it's children's uh, clothing items, infant clothing items for folks who have just had new babies. Um, and the early on team has also prepared activity kits that are being shared through the community for families and for agencies who are able to just reach more families and make this time at home a little more manageable with some new activity ideas. So that's one piece that has been able to continue virtually. Um, our prenatal classes, as well as our babies here now what parenting class has uh, also gone virtual. So that has been excellent to be able to continue educating families in Ottawa that way. Um, our biggest success probably is the uh, continuation of our postpartum support drop-ins. So those were incredibly well attended in person and it was really important that we got those supports up and running immediately. Uh, when the COVID crisis struck. So at this point, we have uh, two online virtual postpartum support drop-ins weekly. We have the Tuesdays, so it's Tuesdays and Wednesdays, 10 to 12. It remains a completely free service. Um, we do have folks registering uh, via Eventbrite um, and then a Zoom link provided uh, through that just to ensure a little bit more security. The groups remain open to folks who are struggling or having perinatal mental health challenges, whether that be in pregnancy um, or anywhere up to 12, you know, when their children are 12 uh, months old. So that is loosely facilitated by a postpartum doula, um, but it's very much guided by the folks that are there in attendance that day. So, um, People are able to come for five minutes if that's all that they need, come for the full two hour period of time, 10 to 12, uh, pop in, pop out. So we, we've really been able to keep that drop in style, which has, I think, been really successful for us uh, in the past in terms of, of the physical um, structure of that program. Um, so there's no pressure for people to kind of come in and lock themselves in for that full two hours. So we're seeing excellent turnout. Um, it's been really wonderful to see that these, these groups of women that gather uh, virtually are then able to stay connected when those postpartum support drop-in Zooms are done. So it's really creating a community of folks who are going through very similar challenges. Um, we have sort of designated loosely the Tuesday group to be a bit more COVID specific. And that's for folks who are, again, experiencing mental health challenges, perinatal mental health challenges, but are extremely exacerbated with the specifics of the COVID uh, pandemic. So people needing to have a voice and to really um, be heard in terms of their anxieties and their concerns and fears around COVID specifically. Whereas the Wednesday group is a little bit um, just more focused on perinatal mental health. There it was a large group of women reaching out saying, like I've kind of had it with COVID and, and I, I need to talk about some other things now. So while any topic is welcome on either day, um, we did make that distinction, which uh, so far has been working quite well. So that's every Tuesday and Wednesday, 10 to 12, completely free. 
um, loosely facilitated, but very much guided by the participants in, in, a, in a peer support model. No pressure to talk. Um, folks sometimes just want to hop on and listen and have that validation that, you know what, you are certainly not the only one experiencing some of these challenges during this time. Um, we're all, our mental health is all a little bit taxed with um, the goings on in the world. And then having a, a, a baby to care for uh, in that postpartum phase really exacerbates some of those anxieties. So that's been uh, so one thing that we are incredibly proud of. We've also um, brought back our postpartum support drop-in for dads and partners. So that's an opportunity for folks to, again, come and talk about the challenges of, of parenting and also the challenges of seeing their partners may be suffering from parental mental health challenges or perhaps they themselves are, are having some difficulties as well. So it's just an opportunity for, for people to come together, talk about some of those things, get resources, get tools, hear shared experience, understand that they are absolutely not alone during this really uncertain time. Um, and that is being offered twice in the month of June. So that is, um, that's kind of in a nutshell where, um, where our perinatal mental health services are sitting right now. Uh, the numbers continue to increase weekly, which is wonderful. There's lots of referrals coming from healthcare providers and word of mouth, which is so awesome. You know, people saying this group really, um, really saved me, really was able to give me a community in which to share some of this experience. So that's been wonderful. And then the final piece um, would be the continuation of our birth companion program. So that has, we've been able to go virtual with that as well. Uh, so we are still able to take referrals. We're still able to provide prenatal labor delivery and postpartum support up to six weeks uh, for uh, at-risk and marginalized folks in the community. That is as simple as calling uh, themselves to reach out to get some support. We're accepting referrals from any agency at all. Um, families are matched with birth companions who they have already had training, but they've had additional training and what it looks like to provide virtual um, prenatal support and virtual birth support. It's a little bit different as you can imagine, not having that hands-on piece, um, but the quality of the support has not been affected. We're still able to get folks connected make sure that they're getting the, the correct information, the right referrals, um, having discussions about what uh, impacts the pandemic will have in their labor delivery experience and certainly in their postpartum uh, phase as well. So that is, uh, we're very, very happy to be able to continue providing these awesome services in the community. Thank you, Courtney. That's fantastic. So um, you're the point person for contact to access those programs? Yes, yeah, so they, they can, I believe we're, I think we put the, the uh, website at the bottom of the post, if I'm not mistaken, but um, it's myself and my colleague, uh, Genevieve Shabbat, in the program. So an email, bpcp at mothercraft.com uh, is, an, is an option in terms of reaching out for referral. Everything is being checked very regularly, so even just calling Mothercraft directly uh, and leaving a message for myself or Jen is a great way. Email also, and I think all that information is on the um, poster that you uh, are going to be showing for the postpartum support. So I am the contact kind of for both those pieces. Oh, fantastic. And how um, how long before birth uh, should people contact you for the doula program? So always earlier the better. Uh, sometimes folks give us a call, um, you know, as, as the due date is nearing, we typically match people in their third trimester. That's become a little more flexible as folks are needing more support now. Um, you know, more information, more access to resources and that kind of thing. So typically third trimester, the beginning of the third trimester would be a great time to reach out. That being said, when we get those calls and we do get them, oh my gosh, I think I'm in labor and I'm going to be alone. Can somebody help? We are always able to, to be able to facilitate some level of support, which is really great. Um, so, but because I think right now the key to informed birth and certainly an informed postpartum experience is to do some of that prenatally. So I would say the earlier the better if possible so that we can get a bit of a rapport built and really get that family connected. Yeah, that's awesome. And what would, um, what could someone expect at the breastfeeding uh, workshop? Yeah, so we have um, a wonderful IBCLC, um, Beth McMillan, who is running our Breastfeeding 101 workshop, and that is a free workshop offered through our early on programming. 
Um, that's coming up in June next week, I believe. So it's really the basics, right? It's helping folks to understand um, what some, some preparation, some information, um, what it looks like to hand express, what it looks like uh, to, uh, to have questions about whether or not your baby is getting enough to eat, um, some troubleshooting uh, sort of scenario she goes through. And then we also have two more workshops following that. One is Pumping 101. We get probably more questions about pumping um, than anything else, uh, kind of offshoot from that general breastfeeding 101 workshop. Um, so there's we have some programs that have small fees associated with them. So the Pumping 101 is one of those that's coming up, as well as how to introduce solids while continuing to breastfeed. So that's an additional workshop coming up in June. So the three run uh, three consecutive weeks back to back. The Breastfeeding 101, however, is a free workshop to get folks sort of set on the right track, get their basic questions answered, um, get connected to community resources that are currently being offered because a lot of our, our supports have shifted, of course, to virtual models. Um, and really just answering questions of people who are, it's, it's very much a prenatal breastfeeding um, workshop, I would say, for people who are interested in it, but kind of need to know the basics, right? Like, what can I expect? How does milk work? Um, what are some positions that I should be considering? Do I need props? Do I need books? Do I need nipple shields and all these things that we know are, are really prevalent questions that new parents have? And Beth walks people through understanding how breastfeeding works and what uh, they can do prepare, to prepare for their little ones. Yeah, that's amazing. You guys are must be super busy with, with everything that's going on. We are, but it's so exciting to be able to continue the work. We know that lots of folks access our services and to be able to continue providing has been a real honor. I'm so grateful for these platforms. Uh, it's so that amazing. We're still able to reach families. It's amazing how quickly you've made the transition. Thank you. Yeah, we definitely got right on it, <laughs> which is good. A little bit of troubleshooting at the beginning as we all started to navigate this virtual world, but um, well, there's, of course, benefits to physically gathering to be able to reach new parents in this period of time and create community and opportunity to get together and ask questions from either parents who have come before them or from professionals and family resource workers has been invaluable. That's amazing. Thank you so much, Courtney. Thank you so much. So next, I, I'd like to introduce again Wendy from Family Services Ottawa. Nice to see you, Wendy. Good to see you as well, Nancy. Thanks for having us here today. Um, so uh, Family Services Ottawa, we offer uh, counseling um, uh, for adults and couples and families, but we also have uh, numerous groups. So we, uh, we have uh, parenting courses and uh, group programming, as well as we have um, an anti-violence uh, counseling and group programs for women. Uh, we offer also offer Around the Rainbow, uh, which provides services for members of the uh, LGBTQ plus uh, community uh, in the form of um, youth uh, programming for, for um, youth who are transgendered, as well as uh, uh, play groups uh, for parents. So we have all the, that range of programming. And we also have um, so our parenting courses, we have uh, various groups we, uh, that we offer for parenting. And we are in the process right now of launching a parent coaching program. It's not up and running yet, but we are, uh, we are in the process right now of uh, offering individual support uh, to families through uh, uh, virtual video conferencing. And so all of our programs, just like Mothercraft, we've uh, worked really hard to get uh, all these services uh, virtual so that we our uh, programs are streamlined so uh, people can get uh, uh, counseling through virtual uh, or, or telephone. Uh, you mentioned uh, Beyond the Baby Blues. So yes, I'm one of the co-facilitators of that program. It's a postnatal uh, depression anxiety group. Uh, it's an eight week closed group uh, that is an opportunity for um, moms to come together in a safe environment to just discuss the postpartum depression, anxiety, and explore uh, the impact on themselves and family. Uh, so this is an um, it's 
eight weeks, it's closed, it uh, meets for uh, two hours uh, with a maximum of 10 participants. So unlike the drop-in at Mothercraft, uh, we're, we're quite structured. Um, there isn't that drop-in component. Uh, there is an expectation that moms would come to the group for the full eight sessions, um, mainly because each session builds upon the other one. And it's uh, uh, in order to support the mom in learning and parsing some of the tools that are needed for, uh, for recovery and coping. So moms will develop skills to relax and use mindfulness practice um, to manage their anxiety, as well as learn about understanding some of the impact that our thoughts are um, on uh, getting through the postpartum depression anxiety. So our goal um, with this program is to increase the awareness of the relationship between the thoughts, feelings, and behaviors, and then look at ways to decrease the dynamic, the damaging negative thoughts. So as the group progresses, moms can begin to shift um, their perspective to more realistic, positive thoughts. So that's one component of this group. Um, we also explore self-esteem and the transition in the identity of the moms. Um, because that can really uh, come to the demands of having a baby. Sorry. Um, so there's, uh, we explore some of the identity, what the strategies can be to increase the self-esteem, because quite often when there's, uh, when you go from being a lone person to a new mom or to a couple with now with a baby, there can be, uh, it can really have an, an impact on one's identity and self-esteem. So that can, that's an ongoing theme that we look at throughout uh, uh, the group. So we also explore uh, the influence on parenting style um, and family of origin. And we really try, because we really want to take a holistic perspective on, on all the different factors that can contribute um, in having postpartum depression and anxiety. So we explore some of that and how it can have an influence on the way that we're parenting, how we're co-parenting, as well as uh, how it can influence uh, the depression and anxiety and manifest itself. Uh, uh, another piece of uh, the group is around um, establishing positive relationships. And so we start looking about, we support the moms in uh, developing assertiveness skills and asking for what they need. Cause that can be really tough when you're going through depression, postpartum depression, anxiety. It can be, when it's, it can be really hard to identify what you're needing at that time for yourself. And then to ask for help from another person can be um, another challenge that, uh, that the moms can face. So we really support the moms in when identifying their needs and then how do you ask for it and working through some of the guilt and shame and uh, working through some unrealistic expectations of yourself and trying to be that perfect mom and, uh, and sort of shifting some of those expectations that can be really damaging uh, to oneself. So, we really take, um, as mentioned, I said, really holistic approach. One of the pieces that we really like to involve the dads in, or the partners in the programs, so we have a partner information session and that's separate from those eight weeks. And so partners come to the group uh, on their own and it's an opportunity for them to get a better understanding of postpartum depression, anxiety, um, some of the contributing factors and uh, looking at ways in which they can uh, support their partner in, in the recovery and, uh, uh, and as well to get the, the partners connected to resources. I, we certainly uh, make referrals to Mothercraft because that the, the partner support drop-ins are really important in getting the partners connected to know that, um, that they're not alone in this and it can be really helpful uh, for sharing in a really in a safe environment um, of what the family is experiencing and uh, learning strategies on how to uh, work through all the different emotions that can be happening at this time. Um, 
so like Mothercraft, this right now we do have uh, Beyond the Baby Blues. Is we're offering it virtually. We're halfway through the group right now. Um, so the next time that we will be offering this program is in the next fall. So what families can do is they can contact me at Family Services Ottawa, and I can. Uh, uh, take down their information and when we know the next upcoming date of a group I can let them I can let them know and uh, and get them connected. So who do you think would be a good candidate for that Wendy like what what would be a person that would um, be a good fit for your group? So it's it is self-referral there's no need for a for a midwife or a doctor to make referrals so it's really for any it's it's really for anyone who is experiencing postpartum depression anxiety and um thinks that they would they would like some it's someone who would like some mutual support from other other uh others who are experiencing it it's um someone who's looking for for coping strategies and it's you know we we don't um i think sometimes people are apprehensive of joining a group uh we really meet the moms for where they're where they're at where they're at. So they don't. We, there's no pressure to participate. Um, it's quite inclusive, and we're so. Um, I would say it's anybody who's worried about the depression or anxiety that they're experiencing uh, to contact us. So the process for coming into the group is that uh, they would speak with myself at the beginning. I do cope say facilitate with a therapist and so I would set up um, an intake meeting with the therapist and at that point uh, we use two screening tools um, it's not to diagnose it's mostly for information for the therapist and the mom to look at where where they're at in their journey and um, if we don't feel like it's an if it's an appropriate uh, program for them we'll certainly make a referral elsewhere so yeah it's anybody who's who is concerned about their depression anxiety yeah that sounds like an amazing program it sounds really well um thought out because i know having um being a mom myself we do have high expectations for ourselves mm -hmm. and it is a huge transition from being one person to being part of such an intimate um, partnership with your baby. Yeah, it's, it has such a huge impact on identity. And, um, and I don't, and we don't, you know, one of the things that we keep talking in the group is that we just don't talk about these, what kind of those shifts happen during when, when during the perinatal time period. And so I think it really catches some of the moms off guard. Of, um, and a, there's a lot of guilt, um, for all those feelings that they may be experiencing. So we really uh, work to provide a safe environment to have some of those conversations that are taboo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. I love the, the communication skills too, because it's a time when you need to start asking for support, maybe leaning on other people more. And for people that aren't used to doing it, it's great to have the tools to, to know how to reach out. Yeah, and we, we, you know, we underestimate the impact on the partnership. You know, our, our relationships change once we, once you go from a couple um, uh, to, to, to co-parenting. Yeah, you know, and even um, it's just, it's, this is also for, for parents who are single parenting. And we talk about the changes in the relationship with co-parenting as well. So it's not, um, when we do have a partner support night and information time period, um, it can be anyone within your support network, whether that's whether that's parents or sisters or or who, whoever is providing you support. So uh, moms don't have to have a partner mm -hmm. at that time period to be participating. That's amazing. That's amazing. And it sounds like you, your agency also made the transition fairly quickly. You're, you're up and running. Yeah, it was, it was unbelievable. I mean, for the parenting program specifically, um, we were, we were, we delivered all of our, uh, 
all of our parenting courses as planned. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it was wow. pretty remarkable. It, it's amazing some of the stuff that we're doing right now that we just never thought we, we were. And I'm really excited about launching uh, this parent coaching uh, aspect of our program. And so I guess for the parent coaching, um, people would go on to the Family Services Ottawa website? So that, yeah, so that is one option. We don't have it on our website now because as I mentioned, we're just in the process. So if anybody, so if anybody wants any, has any questions, um, they can go on to our website. If they go to our parenting program, they can email me uh, or call me and I can give them further information. Awesome, that's great. So I don't know if we introduced Aisha. Aisha is from um, the Ottawa Birth and Wellness Center. Um, hi, Aisha. Hi. Were there any questions? There are no questions at the moment. No. Okay, perfect. I know that um, we get most of our views from people that, that come back and watch these videos afterwards. So if you're a person watching the, the recording, hello, and thank you for coming. Uh, so I just like to point out that, um, as I mentioned before, this is our fifth Facebook Live uh, session with the uh, collaboration between the Ottawa Birth and Wellness Center and Women's Mental Health. Um, the other topics we've covered is um, the pandemic edition with midwives who are answering questions about birth postpartum uh, to do with COVID-19. We had um, Dr. Giroux who gave an overview of perinatal mood and anxiety disorders. Uh, she presented that in English, and there is also a French version of that. Um, there's another uh, Facebook Live for Maternal Mental Health Day, which was on wellness, presented by um, Emma and Anne-Marie from Women's Mental Health at the Royal. And uh, last but not least, we had Dr. Gandhi from the Ottawa Hospital who talked about supports for people with perinatal mood and anxiety disorders. So um, wellness tools, um, psychotherapy, and also talking a little bit about pharmacology. So um, the other thing that I would like to mention is that if anyone has any ideas for future Facebook Live talks, a topic that they would be interested in us hosting, where I'm very interested in feedback and would love to hear from you. You can reply in the comments section or you can send me an email. That's nancy, N-A-N-C-Y dot Kennedy, K-E-N-N-E-D-Y at theroyal.ca. So any um, feedback, any suggestions for future Facebook Live would be more than welcome. So um, Aisha, I'm assuming there's no more, there aren't any additional questions? There are no questions, um, but we'll be posting the resources that you've mentioned uh, throughout the call in the comments below for everyone to be able to access easily um, shortly after the, the live is finished. Perfect. And any questions, additional questions that people have, they can post underneath. And both Wendy and Courtney said that they're more than happy to um, answer any future questions. Mm -hmm. Nancy, may, uh, may I add that if there's somebody who is um, would like to seek counseling, uh, whether it's for individual, family, or couple, um, they can contact Family Services Ottawa and speak with our intake worker to get more information. Perfect. And so um, we could also post um, both web addresses for Mothercraft and Family Services in our comment section so people can access your services easily. Um, Courtney, did you have any final thoughts? That was perfect. I was just going to offer that uh, that we could put the link below to Mothercraft. So um, the early on calendar is present there in PDF form. Um, and all the links are active. So just clicking on the link of the activity or the event or the workshop that families would like to explore and that will take them right to the registration page. Um, again, if it's perinatal mental health uh, um, focus, 
they're welcome to get in touch with me directly. And um, it's just my first and last name, Courtney.Holmes at mothercraft.com. Um, and any, even just sending a general email to Mothercraft, it will find its way to me um, if it is regarding the birth companion program or the perinatal mental health supports. Perfect. Any final comments, Wendy, or? No, just if, uh, if somebody does want further information about Beyond the Baby Blues or the parenting uh, courses, what they can do is uh, contact me through um, either parenting at familyservicesottawa.org and uh, I will respond to them as soon as possible and get them connected. That's fantastic. Thank you both so much for being guests today. That was um, very informative and I think people are um, really appreciating your services. Thank, Thank you, you very so much for the opportunity, Nancy. That's, I think it's been one of the more difficult pieces is just letting folks know we're still here and yeah. we're still ready to serve the community. So thank you for the opportunity. Fantastic. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Have Thank a, you. Have thank a good you. day. <laughs>